Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Monday, February the 4th. My name is Eric Wilkinson and some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. But at the end of the day, I am here to teach you some different strategies you can then implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. Also, remember past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having that out of the way, let's get it on with some economic data across the pond. Not really a whole lot to look at. Uh, Spanish unemployment change did come in a lot higher than expected at 83.5 thousand, expected to be 60.3 thousand. And then uh, the, back here in the United States, they got a couple of things over there with the preliminary CPI and stuff, but remember the flash. Uh, is their main number. So those aren't really ones widely looked at. Uh, so we'll move on to factory orders here in the United States. And that came down as a negative 0.6, expected to be a positive 0.3. So much worse than expected there. Um, should cause the equities to see a little bit of weakness today. But one thing we're seeing across the board is weakness everywhere. So nobody's happy. Whenever the markets are all down, Nobody's happy, it seems like. So um, we've got crude oil just off a little bit today by about a dollar. Not really moving a whole lot out of these mid 50s, mid to lower 50s. As you can see, we're actually building a volume node here in and around this area where price is being accepted at these levels. So uh, we could see the paradigm after it's going to take a while, but the paradigm move a little bit lower from up there at 67, 68 which is where the point of control is now start to migrate lower as uh, we start to see the maybe economy slowing, lack of demand for oil and things of that nature. Gold futures continuing their topping pattern here. Today, we tested the value area high and that is going to act as support as we were above it. You can see we peeled through that came very close to the five day moving average and then started moving up and away from it as I think Broader equities being a little bit bearish right now, it, there has to be some type of flight to safety and that might end up being with gold here as we're seeing this rally as the equities have opened. So we're getting a little bit of upward pressure with gold. I'm still bearish in it. I believe it's going to uh, basically break through this value area high, which is acting as support, come down and at least cover this gap here. But I actually believe it's going to come down and test the 61 Fibonacci here, which uh, correlates right around to 12, uh, what is that, 1280 or so. So I think that we're going to see a little bit of roll over here. I don't think this is going to happen necessarily this week, but I do believe we're going to start seeing weakness uh, filter into the gold market and see it kind of roll over a little bit here. All right, bonds similar as well. They're down on the day. Everything's down on the day. Down almost a point though in the bonds. As bonds start to go down, that is an indication that interest rates are going to start creeping up. Okay, while I don't think that interest rates are going to start creeping up, especially with the economic data we've been getting lately. So uh, the upside is your risk in the bonds as far as I'm concerned. I think that these uh, the 130 handle in bonds is out of the question for the foreseeable future anyway. So I was actually looking at selling some TLT uh puts in here and trying to find something to do. I haven't found anything yet for the bonds, but I do want to play them to the upside. All right, so VIX, as you can see, VIX is coming off, despite the fact that we're seeing the Dow in negative territory, as you can see with the Dow down about 26 points, it's not a huge negative number, uh, especially as of lately, we've had, had triple digit moves uh, it seems like on a daily basis, but again, looking for it to migrate back down to the point of control. That's not to say that we aren't really kind of right there. You can see this is a massive volume node uh, out here on the side where there's been a lot of price and volume transacted, which is an indication of acceptance of price at these levels. So um, this support and resistance, as I've talked in the past, may not be that much of a major support and resistance area as the market kind of toggles back and forth in and around that point of control, which is going to trump a Fibonacci number. All right, we're right there at the point of control for the NASDAQ. I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks that I've expected these markets to kind of migrate back to the point of control, settle down in and around those uh, a little bit before we really find any discernible direction because the economic data outlook 
is really kind of uh, vague or fuzzy, if you will. It does look a little bit bearish, but I think that this where the price has been accepted is where the market is going to find the most comfort, despite the fact that we may be looking uh, recessionary or uh, in a bullish uh, environment. So I think that we're going to settle down here until we can kind of really take in all of this economic data. E-mini s and is again, right there back to the point of control. I feel like I've been talking about this for months now that we are going to come back to this point of control and settle down. We're right back there. Now it is a matter of whether or not we start seeing volatility start coming out of these markets and the market starting to settle down. So with that being said, let's check out the daily chart. Each candle is a 30 minute chart. Each blue section is a day, it includes the overnight section session as well. But you can see the last two days being Friday and today, so far very inside days from the previous day. So uh, that is basically a neutral market uh, bias, if you will, when we start having these inside days, the market's really getting comfortable in and around those levels. So with that, we can't really sell premium right now because all the stocks that have high premium or high volatility have earnings right around the corner. So this is making it very difficult for us to get in and around these stocks. So with that being said, uh, McDonald's has already had its earnings. So I decided to go in and play this to the upside. I think that they've been doing a lot of advertising. This bacon thing I think is going to uh, give them a little bit of a bump in their bottom line. So I like to play this to the upside and think it might even go up and test those highs. So I decided to go in and do the April longer duration because I'm buying premium, right? I don't want that premium decay like we talk about in those webinars. And I bought the 190 calls in there for 74 cents. And I did that both in my IRA and in my margin account. Obviously my IRA, I did a little bit smaller because it's not quite as big as my margin account, but I did it uh, in relation to the size of that, okay? And usually what I say is, uh, you know, somewhere around risking 5% of that portfolio value here on any one type trade, that would be the max. And then we look at JP Morgan. I don't know where JP Morgan is gonna go. You know, if the interest rates stay right here, that could hurt them. And if interest rates start to go up, obviously that's going to help a banking uh, inst uh, institution. So uh, I don't know which direction this is gonna go. So I decided to play this with the straddle and went in there and did the 105 uh, straddle in there. So that's 105 calls, 105 puts that I bought in April and I paid $7.62 for that. Both again, in my IRA and in my margin account, put something in there. Uh, for both of those, all right? And that's about it for today. Um, tomorrow though, we're gonna be doing a little special webinar. I'm gonna be with the uh, Tiger Shark Trading and doing a webinar on the importance of implied volatility. It's going to be all about implied volatility and that coefficient and how we trade in and around that. Now we are in the middle of a full-on course of volatility and strategies that go uh, that are appropriate for different volatility levels. I'm going to really drill down on volatility in this uh, webinar. So if you want to check that out and have been attending this course, that would be a very good idea because it'll give you a little bit more insight into this volatility coefficient that we talk so much about in the webinars. All right. So go to protraderstrategies.com, sign up for that. You probably got an email. You can click on that link. That's all I got for you guys. Hopefully I, hopefully I see you guys tomorrow. If not, we'll see you again on Wednesday, uh, sorry, Thursday for the short put uh, spread. All right, that's it. If you can't take that, take it easy.